Can you spot autism in under a second? What do you think? Maybe you're pretty sure you already know the answer or just think it's a dumb question in general. But actually, there's an important lesson worth exploring here and the answer might surprise you. Hi everyone, Paul Mikolev here from Asperger's From The Inside. I make weekly videos sharing the human side of autism, so make sure you hit subscribe to get the latest content. Can you spot autism in under a second? So to answer this question, let me start with a story. So a couple of years ago, I was walking down a crowded city street and I saw a little girl in a pusher out of the corner of my eye. And before you know it, I caught myself smiling and upon further investigation, I realize I'm smiling because I've realized instantly that she's autistic. And I'm smiling because I recognize that bouncing motion. That's, that's the kind of thing that I would do. Okay, so by this stage, my rational brain is catching up and there are huge doubts forming in my mind. I've just seen something, possibly a passing shadow in the, out of the corner of my eye and suddenly I've already decided that this little girl is autistic. I mean, seriously, does that make sense? So I look over again to see if my theory is correct and I notice that she's looking up up at the sky, sort of with the sun on her face. And she's got her hand and it's in front of her face and she's moving her fingers between her face and the sun. I also noticed she had a necklace with a little pendant that looks remarkably like a chew toy. And on closer inspection, she is way too big for that pusher. It's probably designed for a two or three year old and she must be at least five or six. And then as if I needed any more proof or you know, maybe my brain was just looking for proof, but the way she smiled and the way she was looking around, I was just 100% sure in my own mind. I mean, I could have been wrong. I'm not a diagnostician. I'd observed this girl for about three or four seconds by this stage in total. I was so sure, I was so excited that I could, that I could pick it with, with half a sideways glance that I wanted to go up and speak to her mother and, and share this news. I didn't do that for, for various reasons, uh, which you can probably guess. I mean, firstly, I wasn't even sure that she had an official diagnosis, so that might not have been the best message to hear from a random stranger in the street in the middle of the day. Secondly, even if she did have a positive view of autism, the idea that it might be so bleedingly obvious to everyone, well, everyone meaning me in that situation, might not have gone down so well either. So why am I telling you this story? The point of this story is that our brains have the ability to make very, very, very quick decisions based on minimal data. We often call this a first impression. Do I like you? Do I trust you? Are you a friend? Are you someone I should be wary of? How cautious do I need to be around you? All of these things are judged unconsciously in the first split second after seeing someone or meeting someone for the first time. So we usually call that a first impression. And you know what this system is designed to hone in on and pick up on first? Differences, anomalies. Is there anything strange about this person? Is there anything about this person that doesn't quite add up, that doesn't quite meet my expectations? Do they have a funny inflection in their voice? Is their eye contact a bit funny? Is their posture not quite as I would expect? All of these things add up in the back of our mind in a split second to come up with a first impression regarding someone that we've just met and know absolutely nothing about. Even for someone like me who is extremely logical and rational and has done a huge amount of work around self-awareness and becoming aware of my own emotions and my own reactions and my own judgments, it still took my brain a couple of seconds to catch up and realized what I was already assuming. So in answer to the question, can you spot autism in under a second? What we can spot in under a second is any form of difference. Now, some of us are more outwardly different from others. That means that if you can appear normal in all of the expected ways in the first couple of seconds of someone meeting you, they might not immediately notice anything strange about you at all. And you have what might as well be called a passing privilege because you can pass through normal everyday society without anyone noticing that you're any different to anyone else. Not all of us have that privilege and I have many friends who would 
immediately stand out as different due to their posture or tone of voice or facial expressions or any number of other things that people would generally pick up on as being immediately obviously different. In fact, I remember one time I was chatting to a young man, he must have been maybe 19 years old, um, in a, in a non-work situation. And he asked me, you know, what I did, uh, you know, doing very good job of small talk. And I told him about the blog and I told him um, that I was volunteering in the autism space and he, he, his eyes widened and he looked at me and he said, did you know I'm actually autistic as well? No one knows, right? I'm, I'm telling you because, because you work in this space and you're autistic yourself. No one else knows because I'm so good at blending in. And I did a pretty good job of hiding my reaction and I didn't want to tell him straight away and burst his little bubble, but it was immediately obvious that he was a little bit different to those others around him. There were several signs that he didn't notice, but there were, that were obvious from the outside. For example, when you're standing in a group, sometimes you can tell if someone is the odd one out. They're standing just not quite in the same pattern as everyone else. You can also look at his attention and his eye contact. While most people were engrossed in the conversation, he was paying enough attention to keep up with the conversation, but you could tell that he was also looking around and you could tell that he was thinking and processing a lot more than the others who were just acting on instinct and going along with the conversation, right? So even in his situation with an intelligent, high masking, high functioning autistic individual, there are still usually clues that people can easily pick up on. Ironically, it can sometimes be those more subtle cues that are actually more detrimental. I mean, if someone obviously had a speaking delay, for example, you're unlikely to hold that against them and think that they're trying to lie to you or trying to you know, dismiss you. Whereas if someone can't make eye contact, if someone is clearly very intelligent and clearly thinking about everything that they're doing and is still being a bit weird, it's easy to think, well, I wonder why they're standing a little bit out. Do they not want to be part of this group? Are they trying to send me a subtle message? And because it's not obvious, the, the neurotypical population often read into different behavior, things that are just not there at all. So again, can you spot autism in under a second? Well, most of the population would not identify that what they are spotting is autism, but they would spot certain traits and certain characteristics that they would identify consciously or unconsciously as different, a bit weird, or at the very least, a little bit suspicious. So I've personally found it very helpful to notice what parts of my behavior seem a little bit strange to other people. I mean, I previously thought that I did a very, very good job of fitting in when I had to. I thought I had fairly good social skills. I thought I could adapt to different situations and behave appropriately and engage appropriately and, and everyone thought it was fine. And that was kind of true. It's just that I would gravitate towards people who didn't judge my differences in a negative way. And don't worry, there are plenty of people who are open-minded enough to accept a few eccentricities. But I was absolutely kidding myself if I thought no one was going to notice anything odd at all. And from an advocacy perspective, it's incredibly important to recognize the power of those snap judgments. So by recognizing the effect of those first impressions, those snap judgments, then we have the ability to start analyzing them and looking past them to give people a second chance. Maybe the reason my friend didn't respond to my text message wasn't because they're angry at me or because they don't want to speak to me. Simply questioning, is the assumption that I've come up with actually true or not, and testing that and getting a bit of evidence for that, then we can move past snap judgments on odd behavior to actually get behind what is really going on here. Most discrimination is not overt or deliberate. We all have unconscious biases that we need to deal with. And unfortunately, as we all know, one of the most tragic outcomes of these kind of snap judgments and first impressions and 
making assumptions on behavior that might not necessarily be accurate is tragic loss and damage to relationships with the people we love. So can you spot autism in under a second? Well, if your brain knows what to look for, the answer is sometimes, yes. Can, you, can everyone spot autism in under a second? Most people are not going to know that the difference that they unconsciously perceive has anything to do with autism. Even if you think you're doing a fabulous job of masking all of your differences so no one could possibly see them. In fact, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Do people notice you're autistic straight away? Do people notice you're different straight away? Or can you fly under the radar so that they don't notice at all? So anyway, I should probably leave it there. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope we can all learn to recognize the impact of our snap judgments and first impressions. And I'll see you again next week. Bye.